go. Welcome to the How to Health Podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm so honored to have Mr. Paul Chatlin of PBNSG, also known as Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. How are you doing today? You know, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I really am. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with us because not only are you the founder of this organization, but you do so many things for others, but you have an incredible story which kind of morphed into the PBNSG. And so can you give us a little bit about your story and how it all started? I mean, you were one day just walking along and what was going on? Well, uh, the story really starts as a young kid because I had a very close-knit family, my my dad and his three brothers. And in their 50s, and I was probably, you know, in my early teens, maybe a little bit less, uh, each one of them had uh, bypass surgery. And two out of three never made it. One was never the same. My father had quadruple bypass surgery. And he recovered, but he was in the most pain I've ever seen him. It was the only time I ever saw him cry. So that's my first memory of, of this heart disease as I reflect back. And then when I turned 50, I realized, you know, I, I, I'm in love with my dog. And it was just totally, you know, hypocritical of me to eat meat, fish. So I said, you know, family, I'm giving up that because I can't love my dog and then eat a cow. It doesn't make sense. And I'm going to take skim, uh, whole milk down to skim milk, thinking I was helping myself. And I'm going to get rid of all those nasty oils. And I'm going to have olive oil because it's the best oil. So I thought I was doing all these health improvements. And then about four and a half, five years later, uh, I've always been a very active person, you know, be it, you know, playing baseball to tennis to working out all the time. And one day I woke up and I had severe chest pains, not knowing what this was. I think I was 55 at that time. And, you know, I kept it to myself. You know, I, I didn't want to share it with anybody. I didn't really know, even know what it was. You know, I web, I, you know, I web MD'd it. Uh, kind of got a feel for what it might be, but being a little stubborn person that I could be, I, I just endured it. And, and for three months I would wake up. I could not even walk 10 steps and I, you know, really couldn't eat. I couldn't play tennis, could do the things I wanted to do. And I just kept thinking that, you know what, I'll, I'll, it's just going to go away. It just, it's going to have to get better. And every morning and every night I would feel that pain. And then one day I said, you know, this is enough. Okay. So I went to my doctor and he discovered, I always, always had a, left bundled block. I, I was born with that. But he, he noticed a heart murmur. So from there, he put me into the local hospital system. And they did a series of tests. And the cardiologist at the local hospital said, we're going to have to do a heart catheter and a heart biopsy because I can't pinpoint what it is. But it's either you need bypass surgery or heart replacement. You see, I had an enlarged heart from all the working outs I did through my life. I had a leaky valve. I had what they call scar cytosis of the right bottom section of the heart. Uh, so uh, I finally, at that moment, I said, you know, I need to share this with my wife. You know, I, I love her so much. I just didn't want her to worry, and I thought I could figure it out myself. So I called her uh, from the doctor's office. She was at work, and uh, she was just devastated. I mean, she broke down and cried. Uh, I apologized for not sharing it with her earlier. Uh, her boss, uh, who had had a lung replacement, two and a half years prior at the Cleveland Clinic, saw her in that bad state and started making a few calls and got me into the Cleveland Clinic about a week before I was to go to the local hospital for a heart catheter and heart biopsy. So I go to the uh, Cleveland Clinic and first, you know, just to get in there, as most people know, it, it takes a year, it takes a long, long time. I was fortunate enough to get in in about two weeks. So that was kind of a miracle. The second miracle was they have a thousand cardiologists and I got assigned the head of heart transplant because that's what they were leaning toward. And it just turns out that his mentor was Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. So that was a, another miracle that I got. And I went ahead and had the heart catheter. And what they discovered was I had a hundred percent block on my right artery and I had two at 65%. Again, also having the enlarged heart, the uh, leaky valves, I was really in some really serious shape. And um, as I'm coming out of the anesthesia from the heart catheter and they're wheeling me toward surgery, uh, I'm really at the surgeon's door, the surgery door, 
And my cardiologist looks at me and says, listen, I've only offered this to one other person in 20 years, but I think you might be a good candidate. Would you consider making a nutrition change and maybe we could bypass the bypass? And I immediately thought of my dad. I've got three sons. And I said, you know, this has got to stop in my family and I think I could do it. So I said to him, okay. So immediately it's 9.30 at night. He picks up the phone and it's like, Hi, Essie, that's for Esselstyn, Dr. Esselstyn. This is Mays, short for Mays and Hannah, my doctor. Um, I've got a patient I want you to talk to, and he hands me the phone, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm in la-la land still, but I'm just listening to this guy. I've never met him, never heard about plant-based nutrition, didn't know who he was. And he says, you know, I think I can help you. Why don't you just go home, and I'll give you a call in the morning. Well, it was a miserable night in, in, in uh, I think it was March, uh, four or five years ago. If my wife looks at me, she says, well, maybe we should just spend the night there. But what do you want? I said, I just want to sleep in my own bed. So my little trooper, my wife, drove me all the way home from Cleveland to Detroit. We got home at about 2.30 at night. And sure enough, at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, I get a call from Dr. Esselstyn. And I listened to him for about an hour. And when I hung up the phone, I bought his book, uh, How to Reverse and Pre- How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, read it that day. Uh, and uh, the next day took every piece of meat, dairy, fish, oils out of my house, and I've been what they call plant perfect ever since. At that time, I'll share with you that my cholesterol number was right around 350, and I weighed about 220 pounds. And today, five years later, I weigh 165 pounds, and my cholesterol is at 100. So uh, I said to myself on that gurney, I said, you know, if, if this changes my life and if this you know, gets me healthier, I will give back. But I needed about two months of bed rest because that enlarged heart was forcing my valves to work too hard. So they really put me on medication that really had me bedridden 16 to 18 hours. And when I was awake, I was just trying to buy a few cookbooks to learn about this plant-based stuff. But um, I decided I'd go to the Esselstyn's to a cooking class because my wife works and I, I could work out of the house. And I thought it was my responsibility to learn how to cook uh, plant-based. When I left, I got the receipt uh, for the class. I sent it into Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they rejected it. And I thought, oh, this is the Lord or somebody telling me this is my mission. I'm going to get a pay code authorized at Blue Cross Blue Shield. So while I was convalescent for three months, I worked the chain of command, got to the highest level, and they all rejected me saying that you have to work with the legislature. And I said, I don't think I've, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that. So I thought, you know, in my three months, I really will tell people, I felt very alone. I mean, if you think about what plant-based was like four and a half years ago, and here in the, uh, you know, suburban Detroit area, I thought I was the only person on earth dealing with this. So I decided, you know, what I'll do is I'll put a $20 ad in the local paper and I'll say, listen, I had heart disease. This is what happened to me, but uh, I'm I'm getting better every day. My angina has gone away. I'm starting to, you know, have my energy back. I'm back, you know, doing my training and my workouts. And if anybody's interested, well, within two days, I had 20 people say, I'd like to come to your house and learn. And I said, oh, I'm on to something. So I brought them into the house, showed them my pantry, talked to them about my recovery, gave them as much knowledge as I had. And I did it again the following month. And sure enough, another 20 people signed up. So I realized, you know, maybe this is what I need to do is maybe share this on a broader scale. So I called the heads of cardiology at the three major hospitals in the area. And I said, just give me a name of any holistic cardiologist that you would recommend that could work with me on sending this plant-based message. Well, I must tell you, I got an earful from each one about the standard American diet and everything else that you could imagine. But they gave me three names each, and one name was consistent, and that was Dr. Joel Kahn. Never heard of Dr. Joel Kahn, had no clue who he was. But I figured since he was mentioned three times, I'll call him first. Well, it turns out he lives about six miles from my house. He invited me over. And after about an hour with him, I said, you know what? I'm not calling anybody else because his passion was there. Little did I know how brilliant he is, how passionate he really is. And I said, how about if you and I uh, find a room at Beaumont, because he was working there at that time, and let's see what we could do. We'll, we'll, We'll bring the information to the people. So I put another ad in the paper, and we had our very first meeting. We had 123 people. The room only held 80. They were standing. It was crazy. But usually, like with these type of meetings, you, you know, have a little bit of a, a drop in attendance. So we did it again the following month, but had 143 people. 
So we were two days away from our third meeting and I got the, the call from Beaumont. You can't be at the hospital anymore. Um, I said, why? Well, you, you're getting too big. And as I dug a little deeper, it was because our message was so against their, their message. So they who were kind enough to tell me two days before our meeting. So I went around this, you know, I was running around with my head cut off saying, I've got to find a place. I really want to be agnostic with the message. So, uh, you know, I called some churches some synagogues. They all welcomed me. But uh, then I made a call to my dearest friends at the Birmingham school systems. And they opened up their doors and they've been with me ever since. And they have been some of the kindest, nicest people. And from that, we launched plant-based nutrition support group called PBNSG. So um, the idea was, is we bring in national speakers. I would explain to them that I could bring in enough people that they will be impressed. And all of a sudden it started to grow and grow and grow. And we've had every single speaker that you could imagine. Uh, you know, if you named the top 10 or 12 or 15, they've been here except for Dean Ornish. Dean, if you're watching this, please come to Michigan. You will love us. And we did the major speakers every single month. We um, have decided to expand just having monthly speakings. So we came up with something called small groups. So we developed a, a small group is somebody who's a volunteer who opens up their house to 10 to 20 people in their neighborhood. Well, we started with five or six and today we have 28. It expands all over the state of Michigan. So we, also I've met some incredibly passionate brilliant people who want to do something more than just a small group. So we started beacons this past year. So we have be beacons are somebody who understands the plant-based whole food plant-based message. And they want to, you know, they've got a little business in them. They want to kind of broaden their uh, group and not make it just 10 to 20 people. So they totally understand what PBNSG is about. I have all the trust and, and loyalty and faith that they, their message was consistent. So we've got these big beacons groups that could be from 50 to 200 people, and they're located in Traverse City, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Saginaw Bay City, and soon we'll be opening up one in Toledo. And um, so, so that's one of the, uh, I would say, spokes of our wheel. Um, we also, uh, I'm, a dream, I'm a dream chaser, okay, just so you know that. I, I go after dreams. So two years ago, I made contacts at General Motors. I went to maybe, oh, 16 locations. And while everyone loved it, unfortunately, they had a contract with an outsourced health company who promoted the standard American diet. And what I found was so interesting was the head people at GM said, we want to hire you because your message is making us healthier. And it makes sense because the bigger, one of the bigger costs is the health costs at General Motors. But because of their contractual obligation, uh, I, I had a chance to interview what plant-based nutrition was to the outsourced company, and they rejected it because they also had maybe 70 other clients. And it would just, you know, it's kind of the reason why you don't hear a whole lot from the American Heart Association these days. You know, they promoted the standard American diet. They've been awful quiet lately, haven't they? Well, that would be the same with this company. So I kind of understood it from a business standpoint, but I'll never understand it from what's doing right in this world standpoint. So this past year, I made contacts in Beaumont Hospital. I've been to 20 locations with the whole idea of being welcomed through the front door. We've got one small group at the hospital. They want to kind of get us in through the back door. And I don't want to do business that way. I don't want to be, I want to be welcome because this is the right thing to do. Let's be real here. Number most important things. You go to the hospital, you're there, going there to get healthy. Okay. How are you ever going to be healthy if you go to that cafeteria? Name the, name the hospital, look at the cafeteria. What's the message they're sharing? Standard American diet. It's very frustrating, but it's very political but it's so vitally important. So I'm gonna continue working with Beaumont Hospital and it's a shout out too for Henry Ford, St. John's and Providence. If you want me, I'm here, invite me. I wanna I want to try and help improve the health of your patients. But we also, uh, uh, I, I also realized too uh, that, well, let me back up one step. We, two years ago, with the help of 14 first and second year medical students, we developed something called the medical course material. As I scanned, you know, the work of young first and second year medical students, we all know that they're not learning nutrition. And what's wrong with nutrition before pills and procedures when your job as a doctor is to help people get healthier? You know, you did sign off on the Hippocratic Oath. That should mean something. It cannot be about the money. 
You take too many years at school for just to be about the money. It's because you care about people. But if you're sharing with them standard American diet information, or it's okay to have a whole bunch of bad oils, then you're doing a misservice to your patients. So we created a medical course material. We presented it to Wayne State University uh, about a year ago. They're going through a curriculum change. So once again, I'm a dream chaser. We have to wait. But it really is, and this is um, going to be on our website very soon. I want to offer it to anybody who sees this, anybody who has a connection at a college. It's four to six points of nutritional information on the nine systems of the body. You see, if you were to create a whole new curriculum, it would take two to three years for it to be approved, even if it was approved. So what we realized is we could just add four to six items on the nine systems to the current curriculum of any college. But once again, um, I have to wade through the politics of big business. And now I'm about ready to open up the medical course material to anybody in the world who would like it, who thinks that their uh, college would be willing to look at it and approve it. Because if we could just get one college to approve it, Let's, let's look at it, the landscape, which is, I had a decision many years ago. Do I go after elementary school kids and teach them about plant-based nutrition? How about high schoolers? I mean, geez, I got three sons. I knew what they were like between the ages of 14 and 20. They knew everything. They knew a lot more than I thought, but they knew everything. So I thought if we could educate them, maybe they can make a difference with their parents and their siblings. But really when I thought about it, it comes down to the doctors. And, you know, yesterday we had our very first doctors teaching doctors. And what I come to realize is everything flows through the doctor's office. When you're not feeling well today, most doctors say, how are you? And you say, I'm not feeling good. They put you on a prescription. If that doesn't work, they put you on multiple prescriptions. And if it gets worse, they do procedures. Never once did my doctor in 35 years ever ask me, hey, what are you eating? Okay, he would just give me pills. I had Zocor to start, and I had the side effects of Zocor. So one day I couldn't walk for, for two days. I had to be bedridden because of the side effects, a high muscle, muscle enzyme. And then they put me on Lipitor. Seven months later, same situation. Finally, he put me on Pravastat, 80 milligrams of Pravastat, the weakest of all the cholesterol drugs. But he was okay with my cholesterol baselining for some 25 years at around 300. You know, he just said, hey, it's in the genes. And I realized, you know, it's not in the genes, but I didn't know it was in the food until I met Dr. Esselstyn, okay? Yes. So we decided uh, about a, six months ago that I have, you know, we've had a lot of relations with local doctors. So I picked the four doctors, one that would be Dr. Joel Kahn, who would talk about cardiology, Dr. Elizabeth Swinor, gut biome, Dr. Carolyn Trapp, diabetes expert who also works at PCRM. And then to head all this up, Dr. Robert Brakey, who is a plant-based expert and is at St. Joe in Ann Arbor. And we said, let's teach doctors. So we decided to put a marketing campaign. We actually had the program last night. We had 91 uh, doctors attend, 35 on the waiting list. We offered CME credits. And the hope is, is that they'll go and start using this with their patients. And soon, oh, I'll be announcing more doctors teaching programs. Uh, as far as PBNSG, we're making a major change this year. You know us as the group that brings in the headliners. Um, and we're going to continue. But we're not going to do it every month. We're going to do it quarterly. So just to let everybody know, on January 10th, coming up this year, Dr. Joel Furman will be our speaker. On February 28th, Dr. Robert Otzfeld will be coming here, along with Tim Kaufman. In May, T. Colin Campbell will be joining us. And then I've got that big open spot for Dr. Dean Ornish for September. But what I came to realize earlier this year was we had a class. It was diabetes only class. And within a week, we sold out of 70 seats. And then it hit me. We could have these great meetings where we could have four to 600 people. And that's so wonderful and it's so humbling. But really, we need to hone in on what 
is affecting individual people. So we had the diabetes only class, it was sold out. I said, you know what we should do? Let's have classes for all ailments that affect people. So we're gonna, I have 11 or 12 strong relations with local doctors here, and they're all committed to the PBNSG message. So we're gonna have next year classes in cardiology and heart health. We're gonna have it in diabetes, but we're also gonna do on weight loss, osteoporosis, lupus, aging, oral health care, sleep apnea, just to name a few. Eastern medicine will be another one. I'm excited about that one. So we're gonna have 22 health educational classes, but then I realized, you know, you can make a change of plant-based, but you gotta, you gotta first try the food. You gotta taste it. On our website, which is www.pbnsg.org, we've got, I think, one of the finest websites around but we have a great culinary curator, Denise kling Teltro, and she has made contacts with every chef or most chefs around the nation, and they are contributors to us, and we must have a thousand recipes. Everyone check out the salad dressing recipes. You'll never take on oil again, I promise. It tastes that good. So we put together three groups of chefs in tandem, two each, and we're gonna have 22 culinary classes beginning transitional 101 classes and advanced batch cooking classes. So we're gonna teach people who have never tried it before what equipment to buy, what to look for, how to label read. And then when you feel a little spunky and cocky and you think you got it, we're gonna take you to the advanced class and show you how to batch cook and some other advancements with uh, culinary equipment. So uh, the, the organization also has 28 restaurants that are plant-based through the community. So that's just some of the things that we're doing uh, as an organization. And uh, I think that uh, that's my story. <laughs> that's an incredible story. I love what you're doing. That is beyond amazing. So my daughter is a first year medical student okay. and plant-based in Texas Tech. And I, when we're done here, I need to ask you about your program. I would love to share that with them and see what we can do. Um, where do I even begin? There's so much. <laughs> you can just freestyle, okay? Just freestyle. Because I'm <laughs> we have we'll answer together. And uh, I know I threw a lot at you, but it's, uh, you know, I probably have some more. But uh, I thought at this point I need a, a drink. By the way, <laughs> yeah. April. And, um, you know, I could, I'll share everything. Hey, how about this one? I'll help you. What does Paul eat? Okay. Well, I wake up in the morning and I usually have kale for breakfast. I know you're going like, wow, kale. How can you have kale for breakfast? Well, okay, so four days a week I have kale and here's how I make it. I put it in my steamer. I wash it really clean, put it in my steamer for about 30 seconds. And then I put a little bit of mustard powder in it so it could open up the antioxidant portion of the kale. A little sprinkle, very little sprinkle of salt a whole lot of pepper. I mix it around with lemon. Oh, is that a beautiful, tasty breakfast? And then three days a week, I have oatmeal. So everyone get a pen. I want to tell you my oatmeal secret. Uh, and you can use any oatmeal, it doesn't matter. But I put a old mother oats, old fashioned oatmeal. And I put a handful of raisins, another handful of oatmeal. And then the fun begins. Because then I take whatever fruit you love. I personally like bananas, strawberries, and blueberries. And then I take uh, soy milk. You could use any of the milks. I happen to like soy milk. I take about a half a cup. I take it just before boiling. I put it all over my oatmeal and then I steep it with a cover for about five to seven minutes. And then when I take the cover off, I add, okay, here's, here you go. Here's the pencil. I add cinnamon, apple pie spice, pumpkin pie spice, and nutmeg in a mix. I sprinkle it all over my oatmeal and guess what? I'm having dessert for breakfast three days a week. So for lunch, I'm very boring. I have a huge plate of broccoli. Again, I steam it. I put a little bit of the mustard, ground mustard on it, and a little pinch of salt. And then I have a cup of soup. Okay, that's what I have every day. And then for dinner, you know, I get a little fancy. I just found a really great farro burger recipe. So I played around with that. And I think I made enough farro burger to last a year. It was just, I couldn't believe how much I was using. Um, I did it to restaurant scale. That's what I did. I didn't do it to my scale of my refrigerator. I did it to the restaurant. 
Uh, but what I do is I batch cook and I freeze. And then I'm fortunate. I go to three or four local restaurants and I'll buy you know, 10 pounds of their lentils or 10 bowls of their incredible soup. You know, so, you know, I'll go there to have lunch or dinner, but I'll call a day ahead of time. And I'll just say, you know what, I'll be there. Give me a whole bunch and I'll freeze it. I bought an extra freezer. And this way, I don't go hungry. I'm not miserable with what I'm eating. So that's kind of what I eat every day. That's a great idea to, to buy batch. Basically, you're buying your batches from a local restaurant that you trust that's cooking the way you're wanting to eat. That's yeah, fabulous. I'm very, very fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah. You are very fortunate. When I started this six years ago, I was in Western Colorado in a little town called Rifles. So. Yeah, but, but here you are today. You're, you know, epitome of health, you know, and you're happy, you're, you're happy and energetic. So, Linda. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we, we've had some amazing stuff happen. So absolutely people always ask, what are you eating? How did you do? But I'm curious, can you give us a little transition from you were barely could walk with this heart disease, the severity of it, to within three months, what was that transition like? Can you give us a little bit of a timeline as your symptoms as they abated and you start feeling better? Well, you know, again, I, you know, having the enlarged heart leaky valves, they put me on one of those fills, those Ramafil or something in conjunction with another pill. And I literally was sleeping for 16 hours a day. And um, I went from, at that point, about 220 pounds down to 152 pounds. And, you know, people, how people were looking at me going, what is wrong with you? I said, hey, I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. So it took about two weeks, just two weeks, and the angina went away. To me, that was, oh, it was like hitting the life lottery right there because, I mean, I was in so much pain every day. I mean, really, when they describe an elephant on your chest, it really is, maybe, maybe a rhinoceros, but something really heavy, okay? And you just are debilitated or... You know, I played tennis the day before the angina started and didn't really have any symptoms. I played the next day. I, I took like 20 timeouts. I could not catch my breath. I was so miserable, just miserable. So after about two weeks, the angina went away. So come on, anybody could do anything for two weeks if it will improve your health. So that's a challenge to everybody watching. Two weeks on a plant-based, plant-perfect diet, your angina will go away. Always talk to your doctor, though. Always talk to your doctor. Oh, absolutely. So, the doctor needs to be involved. So what do you, when you describe plant perfect, I mean, I understand what you're talking about because Esselstyn, I've been to the Cleveland Clinic with him. I love him to death. What, can you give us a definition of what plant perfect is of people who uh, aren't aware of that term? Fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, no avocado. Okay. I will tell you about a year and a half ago, uh, I, I received a call from Dr. Michael Greger and about a week later from Dr. Joel Furman and said, I think there's enough study that you could have six walnuts. So boy, that was a great moment. So now I parcel out my six walnuts. There's a list on, I think, Dr. Greger's website, nutritionalfacts.org, where he'll describe, you know, you could have, you don't have to just have walnuts. You could have like four pistachios or something. I'm like, who could just have four pistachios? Walnuts, I can understand, not the pistachios. So, um, you know, so I have six walnuts a day and, you know, the thought behind it is, is that the oil from those is just much better for the elasticity of the arteries and the heart, but I, I don't have any more pre-regimen. So it, after two weeks, I started being able to walk a little bit better, but it really did take me about two months to start feeling somewhat normal. And I had to go back working out and trying to build some muscle back. I lost a lot. And, you know, I would say within about a three month period, I was back playing tennis again feeling myself, feel, no, actually feeling better than I ever had. Let me explain. What I didn't realize eating plant perfect, what it would do to me is, you know, I'm a product of the 70s and I don't, you know, hold anything back. You know, in the 70s, we got to try every little fun drug you could imagine. And the best drug I've ever been on ever is plant-based nutrition. It's pure energy. I mean, I just, you know, I'm about ready to turn 60. I, I feel like I'm 40. Uh, I'm now I'm doing hot vinyasa yoga every day and, you know, now stay to everybody. And, uh, you know, it, it, I realize it's important to stretch. I could use my own body weight for all the movements and, uh, I've just never felt better. And, and really I owe it all to, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe my first doctor heard the heart murmur, but certainly uh, divine intervention because I got into a clinic that Cleveland clinic much faster I could have been assigned to any other doctor, but I got assigned to the doctor who happened to know Dr. Esselstyn. And the fact that Dr. Esselstyn called me that night 
and we've become friends over the years. And then maybe I've been blessed because I've had the honor of speaking to so many great minds in the plant-based world. And uh, I'm the lucky one. And they aren't. I am. Oh, absolutely. That's fantastic. What I love about you is that you, you took it upon yourself to share that message that saved your life. So now you have countless people that have benefited from your life story. And I think that's just so wonderful that you were able to do that. And so thank you. For well, thank you. You know, you know, it's interesting for me because as I look back, I said like, you know, I did a lot of things to hurt myself for 55 years and, and, you know, I got a second chance and I realized that, you know what, what's this life about? You know, if, if I have 20, 30, 40 more good years, why not spend the rest of my life just giving back, telling a story, sharing it with people? Because, you know, uh, I didn't know about it five years ago. And, you know, my goal is simply, I'm not going to force or try to convince people this is the way to go. I know it's the way to go, but I can't convince them. And to fight the politics of, you know, big business, you know, the, the meat companies, the dairy companies, all the pharmaceutical. I mean, it probably won't happen in my lifetime. And I realize that. But what I can control is the message. The message is simply, let's educate you on it. We're all adults. You make the choice that you think is best. But also share it with one other person. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why uh, I wake up every day. And, and my first thoughts are, I've been lucky enough to talk to 2,500 medical students over the last three and a half years. You see, the one requirement for every speaker who comes to talk is when they come to town, they have to do a lunch and learn at a medical school or two. So they know they have to come a little bit early because we're going to do a lunch and learn at the medical school. And uh, with, with their acceptance of it, they've allowed me to talk to 2,500 medical students. And if you just do the math, if only 1% of them uses it in their practice, but they see 30 patients a day for 30 years of practice. We're going to save millions and billions of lives. I won't be around for it, but I'll know that, you know, I, I did what I promised I would do is give something back to this world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I agree 100%. I was never so thrilled until my daughter went plant-based and my, my, I got three kids as well, my husband, but that was incredible. And her boyfriend's plant-based convinced his parents. So you can start already seeing this ripple effect in these young well, you know what? I tell people all the time, it's better to feel healthy than full. Okay, just try it. Just, just try it, you know? And, you know, you know how you hear all these things like, oh, it's too tough. It's too tough. You know, it is. When you're out there on an island or you on, you know, you have not a lot of money, it, it's, it's not impossible. But it is tough. But I also want to let everybody know that I just completed a manuscript. It's an 80-page manual that is about 99.5% done called healthier together and it will share I, you know the one probably smart thing i did is for the first two years i wrote in a little diary as to what i did to move this along and then i found uh, a dear friend in stephanie vale who helped me put it together and uh, it, it might be in just email form of some kind but it will be a step-by-step -step of everything we did to grow pbnsg um, so that that will also be available shortly that's a wonderful Wow, it's incredible. So people who are interested in developing this message further, they can reach out to you for help or some suggestions and advice? Well, they could join. First of all, I would ask, you know, join our organization. It doesn't cost to be a member. And you know, just go to www.pbnsg.org. If you live here in Michigan, I, come be a volunteer. I got the greatest volunteers on the planet, the most kindest people. I. You know, it's funny. I was just writing something the other day. I want to show you that, like, um, I, I'm, I'm going to show you. See, I, I was doing some writing, and um, I, I want to I want to share with you that, like, I'll, I'll, re I'll read a piece of it. It says, you know, every day when I go out uh, in this world, I feel I must either defend, I must defend PVNSG or plant based nutrition to the world. I must defend that position because there's so many people who can't believe it's that helpful and healthful for you. But when I'm with all the members of PBNSG and especially the volunteers, I feel really safe all around. And uh, I want to thank them for giving me a safe uh, a stage and, and allowing me to feel safe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess that's my point. So if people have questions, they could always reach me at paul at pbnsg.org, but join our website, get involved. And if you want to do something amazing, 
give me a shout and let's get that manual in your hands and let's see what we could do to start a plant-based group in your neighborhood. Um, I would say to anybody who's interested, before you contact me, let's, let's, let me say three things that need to happen. Number one, contact your local hospital and find that holistic cardiologist who agrees in the plant-based message. That's number one. And that will take some time. Uh, number two, find a scalable venue because you'll be shocked at the people who are even plant curious. You see, we're not a judgmental organization and we do offer a spectrum of services. So I don't care if you just today ate an apple for the first time and gave up a piece of candy, I'm so proud of you. You know, it takes, some people could do it overnight. Some people take baby steps. And all we ask is just be diligent of what you put in your mouth every day. So I've said, find a holistic cardiologist, find a scalable venue, and then ask yourself, how can I advertise this? You know, at PBNSG, there's some 19 free advertising entities that we use to promote the message. So in any major city and most minor cities, there are places that will offer free advertising because you know, you're not a for-profit business. So those would be the three things I would say that you need to do before you contact me. But if you've done those things, I'm hoping that the Healthier Together manual will be done and I'll just send it to you. And then if you wanna talk, I'm available. That's wonderful. That is amazing resources, but you're exactly right. If they go through the trouble of finding someone, a medical, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a cardiologist, but a, a medical yeah, professional, you know, a, a, nurse, a physician. A nurse practitioner. Just, right. you know, and, and the reason behind it is this. Um, when I go up on you know, stage, you know, I get asked medical questions. I'm not a doctor and I don't give doctor advice, okay? But you need to have somebody who really understands the nutritional, the depth of the nutrition and the benefits of it. And somebody you could always say, hey, you answer it, because you shouldn't be given medical advice. That's all. Right, absolutely. No, I, I agree 100%, because sometimes people meaning well, but they do give their, they dispense the wrong advice because they're not professional, medical pro professionals who don't maybe understand that there's some things that we have to watch for in certain individuals. I agree 100%. But two is that you, you do need to find a scalable venue. I mean, so, you know, churches and schools, I love the idea of the schools. That's a fantastic idea. But then the free advertising is, is a great one as well. So now if you have someone that is really struggling with family members, you know, I know you, you mentioned you have three kids and your wife. Do you have someone who's really struggling to get plant-based nutrition into the, the home? What is your advice for those people who have maybe a saboteur in their home. Right. We, we call that house divided, you know, and, 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 you know, I've got a son that is plant-based. I've got two that are, are plant awareness. They, they're aware of it. And you, you know what, first of all, you, you, you treat people with respect. You know, if, if they're not at your place, then you know what, all you could do is hold your position, be strong to your beliefs and uh, be there to educate when asked, because again, you know, it, it is a change. I mean, it really is. But everybody, listen, it takes 14 days to change your taste buds. You're looking at a guy who, lo who thought he could outwork a bad diet, who overate all the time, loved pizza, loved steak, loved shrimp, love all that stuff. I haven't had it for five years. I do miss pizza a little bit. I just do. Okay, it's still with me. But I, I got to say that after 14 days, I now could have eggplant or squash and, you know, there are so many great recipes out there, so many of them. In fact, our website has something called Plant-Based Nutrition 5 and Dime, which is five, eat, five ingredients, five dollars or less, five ingredients or less, or five minutes or less, and the same with the tens. So, you know, you could always find a recipe that you'll like. And um, I would say just, you have to understand, you're not gonna win arguments within a family on, oh, I need my meat because I need this versus, no, you get all the protein you ever want from the plants. But you just sit there and say, hey, when you're ready to talk, I'm here. You know, but I, because I, I, I face that all the time myself. And I just say strong to my conviction. And by the way, look at me. I'm healthy. I feel great. Mm -hmm. Most of the people I talk about, in fact, it's kind of cute. I'll tell you a quick story, which is, um, you know, my, my family likes to eat. So they look at me and they go, you know, they used to say I was trim, but now they're calling me kind of skinny. But I realized they come from a obese world where they may be 20 to 80 pounds obese, 
and they're just used to seeing everyone around them overweight. Well, you know, try it my way for a while. You know, just try tw hey, 21 days, 30 days, not, not this one week or 14, because you really want to see a difference. And oh, by the way, if you ever do it, I'd highly recommend go to your doctor, get a full lipid panel, baseline it, and then try it for 30 days, 30 days, and then get it retaken. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. I've seen cholesterol, total cholesterol dropped 120 points in 30 days and triglycerides, 800 points in 30 days. No. So these, uh, you know, and if someone, if their physician refuses, you can actually in some places actually get labs just on your own, like Quest Diagnostics. I think you can even order some. Yes. There's walkincliniclab.com or something like that. But there are other ways to get, you know, a lipid panel on your own initiative. So yeah, and, I, and by the way, it, it's expensive. So I'm letting you know it, there is a cost, mm -hmm. but... You know, look at it like this. I used to be on five different pills and I was probably spending three, 400 a month, okay? At least. Well, now I buy fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains. Again, no avocados, but I buy those. So my cost of food has gone up, but guess what? I'm on one half pill every other day. So I'm invest. that, that is my health care. My health care is what I put in my mouth, not what I ingest in pill form. Right, That's absolutely. Working. It's working. Food is your medicine. And I just have a question. What did you do before? What is your line of work or your profession? Well, I own a, and still do, it's funny because uh, people say, well, how do you do it? How do you run this huge organization? You know, I was very lucky. I, 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 I work in the telecommunication field. 15, oh, wow, it's probably now 20 years ago, I decided to start my own company with a couple partners. We, we expanded a little bit. Uh, got some good business. But when I got sick, I looked at my business partners and said, either you guys got to kind of step up or I'm going to shut it down because I got to get healthy and I have a new plan in my life. And they stepped up. So we are still doing telecommunication consulting and I'm putting in not much time, uh, but always there when needed because I devote my entire day of every day to kind of spreading this message. And, um, you know, we're about to make some other great, crazy announcements, but uh, I think maybe that might be for the next interview or some other time down the road. But uh, let me just hint out one of them, that uh, we're looking at expanding our reach, not out of state, but in state, where we may grow our membership three times by joining with another organization in Michigan. So, uh, of course, you know, me being the dictator here, uh, I, I certainly want to have a, a, a hand in it, and I'm going to try and help lead it. But this way, we could really put the reach out throughout Michigan. You see, there's always a temptation to take it national or global or something big. But I think it's important you do it in your house first. And Michigan's my home, and this is where we're going to put our efforts. But if anybody wants information or wants to do something anywhere in this world, just reach out to me, and I'll help. Mm, that's fantastic. Because really what's going to happen is you grow when that's going to start taking notice. That's these type of organizations, these grassroots efforts, that's what's going to get politicians, you know, to take note. That's what's going to make these companies going, well, what is going on here? Maybe we need to look and see what they're looking for and, and offer them those services and products to meet their needs. So, you know, I'm going to be throwing out, I hope next year, a speaker challenge. What is that? A speaker challenge. Every speaker who's been at PBNSG, you've got an enormous following. You know who you are. And you know that all you have to do to, is talk to some of the people who you surround yourself who just have benefited by your life. And I want you with them and challenge them and start a plant-based nutrition support group in your town. And if we could do that in the next 10 to 15 big cities, then we won't be just that little speck that we are. People mm -hmm. more about us. You know, you've seen it already at the grocery stores. You know, so much more produce, so many different items. And I think this young generation is, uh, is attuned to eating healthy. I also give you one other little tidbit for this year. Um, I mentioned that my son, his name is Matthew, he's plant based. And behind the scenes, we're working on a whole food, sustainable fast food, plant based fast food restaurant. Because that's the thing that is needed. And, you know, we used to think that I don't want to tell anybody about it. But you know what? McDonald's or Burger King, if you want to be, you want to do it, then give me a call or just do it. 
Because at the end of the day, it's not about reaping riches. It's about saving lives and helping people. Right, absolutely. And I think you're exactly right. I think accessing grocery stores and in those food deserts, the fast food restaurants are there. So if you can make something sustainable and financially profitable for people to take that on as a franchise or whatever, I think that is where you're going to start to see that grow because the food can taste amazing. <clears throat> I know our repertoire of, of recipes and foods was triple, quadruple um, going on a plant-based diet. So that's wonderful. Well, I know you had allotted an hour and I kind of went over our time. So I appreciate you being patient with me and thank you so much for sharing your message with us today. Well, I want to say thank you for having me. Again, you can reach me at Paul at PBNSG, become a member, have some fun with us. And, and Lori, know that uh, anytime you want to connect, reconnect, I'm here and uh, thank you and I'm humbled today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you again so much. All right. Have a beautiful day.